This is the third campaign where we received a pick a Neovision ticket, and I have to admit, man do I have a poor track record so far. My first ticket I used on another copy of Indestructible Life, the second I forgot, and the third I forgot. I'm not even kidding, they're still sitting in my inventory, I'm literally 1-2 to two here. My gosh, this list grew! The first ticket held 28 units, the second and third had 37 units, but now we have a list more than twice that size at 78 units! I'll be considering each Neo Vision unit at EX plus 1, meaning they at least have their Brave Shift or Super Lima Burst. This way, they'll have access to a more stable foundation for their kit, which you can then upgrade later on. Some units do get exceptionally better of EX Awakenings, so I'll be sure to denote them. So, first off, choose your favorite unit. Now obviously this advice doesn't apply to you because you're still here. Cloud. As the first ever Neo Vision unit, Cloud has the dubious honor of witnessing power creep from a front row seat. However, his Super Trust Master reward has done an excellent job of standing the test of time, dragging him along to the heights of B tier. Rain. With Master Cramps, he remains the strongest fire buffer and debuffer, but there isn't much else that will set him apart from the others. You also get him as you track through the game, so despite being a decent unit, he might not be the one for this ticket. Aerith, a healer who can turn into a light magic damage dealer, but it doesn't really work when you try to juggle both rows. You're better off choosing a stronger magic damage dealer or a more accessible healer. Axtar, while he does have relatively low damage, he compensates for it by having relatively weak ice boss. Yoshikiri, a strong supporter who gets better with more EX awakenings. It has to be stressed that EX plus 2 and plus 3 are tremendous game changes for his viability, but as it is, I can only rank him in A. Elena, she also gets much better of EX Awakenings, but that only helps her damage, and only lets her play catch up instead of surpassing the pack. Her Super Trust Master reward is likely the best part of her kit, as it can fit onto multiple units. So, no. Gabrin, a strong physical tank but Runda is free, and he doesn't offer any significant support to truly set himself apart from the little robot. Furion, with Master Crowns, Furion can buff his multitude of weapon imperils, and it helps that his damage modifiers have been raised as well. However, if you don't plan to commit with the crowns, he won't be too useful. Besides, it's pretty much the best he offers. Shoreline, Fina, and Daisy, a sturdy magic tank with strong team-wide defensive support, which is still relevant today even though they've been out since November of 2020. Their stat buffs, breaks, and offensive support aren't very strong today, but they're still a very strong tank. Madame Adele. She can apply a team white earth in dark imbue and amplification, while supplying imperos to boot. She can also completely fill someone's name with burst gauge twice per battle. However, her middling damage is also slow, and though her limit burst support has potential, the rest of her kit isn't as great. Faisalis, a magic damage dealer with no flaws, except for the fact that she has too much competition. Onion Knight, a decent breaker who can lower the enemy's accuracy, but suffers from low damage that isn't helped by a lack of elemental options. Terra, one of the strongest standalone evoke damage dealers on this list, though overall her strength doesn't match that of more recent units. With crowns, she has some of the best elemental amplification field effects in the game, though that requires commitment. Locke, he still boasts some of the highest breaks in the game, but Tidebringer Kaido's presence drops his ranking significantly. That's not to say Locke has a few tools that doesn't set him apart, but that either requires master crowns or a specific setup, a cost Kaido doesn't need. Last well. He can be a physical attacker or a magical attacker, though his personal damage isn't high enough to justify him over other units. Rain and Fina. The pair can self-chain, which is an incredible asset in and of itself. However, self-chaining has also become more common, and while they have healing options, it doesn't really justify them. Lasso and Regan. They too can self-chain, but what they can do, Roberta can do better. Dark Fina and So. A self-chaining magic damage dealer, but guess who covers that? Axtar and Cleo, Lasso and Reagan, but weaker. Their human killer buffs don't exactly set them apart. Lightning, though she can deal different types of damage, over time, focus has shifted to the support she offers. Notably, she has a 90% spare break on her Brave Shift's limit burst, and a Super Trust Master reward that pushes your unit's chain modifier cap, effectively multiplying their damage when applicable. But while she's a decent unit with a wide spread of tools, players get a free copy of her while playing the game. Berserka. A jumper with so much competition, and though the new intrinsic ability helps, it's a fairly steep cost. Snow, a sturdy physical or magical tank but without Maeve's true brave shift. Another common complaint is he can't do anything else, which, while not necessarily true, isn't exactly wrong either. 
His upgrades make him much stronger though, but at this point I doubt this angle is a significant game changer. Ferris. She's a weaker evoke damage dealer than Terra, but is also a decent physical damage dealer with solid breaks. She's also got different fields, though not to the same magnitude as Terra of Crowns. Malia. A good magical tank that's slandered for being less sturdy than Snow and less capable than Shoreline Fina and Daisy. She is a good unit, just not the best choice here. Mello, a water damage dealer who's good at being outclassed, even with his magic spells upgraded to stage 3. Noctis, a strong light jumper, but there's a stronger one on this list. King Behemi, a revamped physical tank whose greatest assets are his support buffs. He's not as sturdy as Runda, but these support buffs are just too good to ignore. Admittedly, his brave shift has a 3 turn cooldown, which can make it tricky to balance all his different abilities in actual battle. But since each ability has a decent turn cooldown, it's not really that crippling. Luna Freya, a strong evoke damage dealer of the same number of feuds as Ferris. However, she doesn't have her breaks and her support is a bit niche. Arden, he's a weaker Noctis, but makes up for it with more elemental flexibility, something that Roberta does better. Sedan, a damage dealer and supporter whose abilities have been surpassed. Cacteria, she's a supporter, breaker, and a magic damage dealer. Though her damage isn't that great, her buff and debuff values are still quite significant. Vivi. He can imbue and amplify fire, ice, and lightning for your team, while letting them chain and inflict respective imperils to boot. His damage output capitalizes on the mechanics of reflect to reach high numbers, but you need to get that reflect from somewhere else. Outside of his elemental support though, there isn't really much to speak of. Coral, A decent damage dealer and a breaker. However, his damage isn't extraordinary and his breaks aren't very good. The Birdie. He's a evoked damage dealer and a magic tank. However, juggling both rows is a bit tricky, especially since tanks are pivotal to your team's survival. It doesn't help that he's not the best magic tank, or the best evoked damage dealer. Noppy. She's a physical damage dealer that can also serve as a physical tank. However, she's not a sturdy tank. Her damage and support is still decent but struggles to find significance from the rest of the list outside of Clash of Wills. Afmao. She's a breaker and a physical tank, tied together with a true rave shift. Unfortunately, she's not both at the same time often leaving the first turn without mitigation buffs or breaks, which could be disastrous depending on the battle. Though past that, she's a good unit of a variety of tools, Wind is also free. Louise, a supporter and a magic damage dealer. Though her damage isn't too strong today without her neo intrinsic ability, she has an incredible number of support abilities that make her quite valuable. It should be stressed that it's mostly quantity over quality though. Link, an incredible supporter. She's also a breaker, but those values aren't too special. Though over time some of the more straightforward buffs are provided in the higher values by other units, she still stands out with her number of tools and flexible options. Charlotte, a ice finisher who turns into a versatile chainer. She's still got some defensive tools, but it has to be stressed she's not a magic tank. Her damage isn't that significant in the grand scheme of things either, even with Master Crowns. Vlad, a dark magic damage dealer that can use Flood in his base form. That's pretty much it. Nico won one of the best water buffers in the game, and a good offensive supporter in general. Sky, a wind jumper, though every other ability isn't element locked and so she's quite flexible. She's much stronger in Clash of Wills than out of it though. Celeste, a sturdy magic tank and one of the strongest ice supports in the game. The true brave shift helps balancing rows, though you still have to choose between limit bursts. Yigni, a magic damage dealer who can wipe out enemy buffs and cure your team of the buffs with his abilities, though not both at the same time. He also sees stronger use in Clash of Wills. Sion, a stronger finisher, but that's pretty much it. Kresnik, a healer and supporter that can psycho certain effects, letting them run until Kresnik himself is removed from the fight. He can also remove elemental imperos and the zombie status from your team on command, and has an ability which forces enemies to deal light damage, which you can work to your advantage. Bulwark and the Melodic Mascots, a supporter who's similar to White Dragon Ling. A good variety of tools, provides powerful buffs, yet carves out their own niche so they don't unnecessarily overlap. The band is also a critical component of the Golden Riser team. Kurosame, a strong ice finisher who can kill himself to fill a large chunk of your team's little burst gauges and fill the Esper gauge. You just killed off your damage dealer for that buff though. Sakura 1, Nico but Lightning. She also provides status ailment resistance as well. Raka, best earth supporter. She also provides better limit burst damage than the Esper duo, alongside the only ability to reduce cooldowns on abilities. Obviously requires a bit of critical thinking though. House. Strong like damage and nothing else. 
Fortunately for her, like Cloud, she has a very good Super Trust Master reward. Oliveira, a self-chaining dark magic damage dealer who can also loop any buffs on himself with his Lunar Burst. Despite having some support tools, it's not fleshed out enough to assert him as a dedicated support unit, but his damage is especially good in Clash of Wills. He is locked to Dark though. Maeve, snow but with a true brave shift, and can switch back and forth without suffering any setbacks. She's sturdy and provides a lot of support, and the only big flaw is her lack of passive provoke and breaks. Riku, Faisalus at the beach, water magic damage and nothing else. Shinju, Faisalus but dirt. Frisia, a strong wind supporter that faces competition from Bulwark and Warrior of Light Barts. She does have the advantage of stronger standard buffs like Lunar Burst damage, but lacks Bulwark's variety. Tulian, a good breaker and the best earth buffer. The buffs do last longer than damage, but 145% Elemental Imperos are showing signs of competition from the number 160%. Lena, a fire evoker that's weaker than Terra. Her field effects, with the exception of her Lunar Burst, also raise her team's elemental resistance rather than lowering the opponents. Her Brave Shift is a breaker and a wind buffer, but her values are even lower than Tulian's, so it's only a matter of time before she's- oh, she she, she was already power crap, my bad. Thorgan. Well, he hasn't trust, so he doesn't outright die like Kurosame. Kane. One of the strongest lightning or light damage dealers in the game, but he's forced to be one of the two and doesn't have anything else to offer otherwise. Rydia. Evoke, but ice. Unlike the others, her Esper fields boost stats instead of anything element related, but a buff is a buff. Lemon Wedge, he's the most sour unit of them all! Lefsha, a strong fire supporter, but is much less offensively oriented than Roberta. Hava, a decent breaker with decent elemental support, but suffers because it's only really decent. President Reagan, the best light to buffer, and the president! Roberta and Ignitos, a strong fire supporter, self chainer, and jumper and has a different killer pack from Ling and Bulwark, all while being flexible with elements. She can also heal, dispel, provide strong standard buffs, and remove elemental imperos. Yeah, she's pretty solid. Dead Man Axtar, the best dark debuffer, but he's dead. Sakura 2, the best unit in the game, C tier. Sakura Blue, the worst unit in the game, C tier. Fravia, the best ice supporter in the game. The thing that sets her apart from the other best ice supporter is the ice field buff, but literally no other buffs, setting a dangerous precedent for supporters in the future. Her attacks can restore her team's limit burst gauges and MP though, supplying a steady stream as she pushes forward with her damage. As a breaker, her numbers aren't exceptional for a new unit, putting herself as a flexible damage dealer first and foremost. Renoa and Angelo, a magic damage dealer who's flexible as she flies on her self-chaining dog, but her best damage comes from being element locked on her brave shift. As far as support goes, she can activate a field effect that lowers dark resistance, but that's pretty much it. Laguna. The best gun debuffer- uh, oh wait, no he's not. Um, the best water debuffer- oh wait, no, that won't last long. Uh, strong breaks- oh wait, no, practically everyone else does that too. I guess he does that all at once though. Heroes and Ward, a self-chaining water damage dealer who can also act as a sturdy provoke tank. I don't think anyone ever needed that. Not Warrior of Light? The best physical tank on this list, and while Runda is free, Warrior can be a step up in certain fights. He can also buff most Limit Burst modifiers for your team, with some exceptions like units whose Limit Burst scale with morale. Of course, the defensive gap only narrows once Runda gets EX plus 3 for free. Oh wait, you can already do that. Oh, unfortunate, B tier. Merilith, fire magic monster who helps your team does fire magic. Unfortunately, there are better fire supports, and when you take that away, she's just damage. Kaido. With easy access strong breaks that bring the other breakers to shame, Kaido very easily stands out even with his best tools locked to Clash of Wills. Even without his 90% defensive breaks and Omni Weapon in peril, he still has 4 killer buffs, water support, and other extra effects that make him very cool. And that's all 78 units! Since they had more than double the cash shown on the same template, I had to be pretty choosy on distinguishing those at the top. As you might be able to tell from previous videos, I really knocked down pure damage dealers this time around, as unfortunately it's a poor road to fill with a specialized ticket, especially with the number of powerful units that are not included in this list. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment below which unit you'll be getting and why. Let's go for the top 3 picks, if you're unsure at the moment. There are a lot of superb units now, and Global has done a very good job at giving each of them their own niche. Personally, I'm thinking Fravia, because I don't have her. 
Yoshikiri, because I want to get him to EX plus three, and... <laughs> oh man, I couldn't even make the joke. And Renoa, because dog! I have most units on the top two rows. Regardless, you have quite some time before you make a decision. At least a month, as of this video's release. But, uh, try not to forget this event like I did. Anyways, before you make a choice, keep in mind that no matter which unit you select, you'll likely get duplicates of them soon after anyways. Cheers!